So now moving on to this issue of patients and families' understanding of their illness and how it impacts decisions that they make about their care. Many, many, many studies have asked patients with serious illness, such as advanced cancer and lung cancer, and their families what they want to know about their illness. And this is one such study where you see in panel A, it says, do you want to be informed the truth about your cancer? And that first um, gray bar shows you that almost 100% of patients wanted to know the truth about their cancer and their prognosis. And on the next panel, you can see that the majority of patients wanted to know that early. Um, usually when I show this slide to doctors and nurses, I, I get a little pushback. And clearly, not every patient, every time they come into the oncologist, wants to discuss their prognosis and their illness and all of that. Clearly, those are difficult conversations. But it's important for patients to have an idea of what their illness will entail and what the goals of their therapy will be. And again, there's some words on this slide that sometimes feel a little offensive, like denial or unrealistic hope. But I actually think this is a very helpful slide for patients and families to think about in that, you know, when you have a diagnosis like lung cancer or pancreatic cancer, you can't wake up every morning, do your morning stretch, and be like, God, I have a terrible cancer. You just can't get through the day that way. So every once in a while, you sort of have to have a realistic discussion with your doctors and nurses about what the prognosis, what the prognosis is, what the goals of your cancer is. But to get through all the rest of the day and all the other days, sometimes you have to have a little unrealistic hope and kind of move on and, and put it in the background and not think about it every day, just so that you can get through the day and the rest of your life. Well, you might say, well, even though you're telling us that patients should know about their illness and prognosis, what's wrong if people overestimate their prognosis or feel like I'm going to be the person that lives forever? Well, the problem with that is how patients perceive or accept their diagnosis impacts decisions that they make about their care. And we know that patients who are sick from their cancer, who have an overly um, optimistic perception of their prognosis, are more likely to choose intensive medical therapies, like be in the intensive care unit, and they're less likely to receive hospice care. We're going to talk about hospice care in just a couple of minutes, but hospice care is an incredibly important component of care for patients as they become more ill from their cancer. So if patients make a decision to not receive that care in a timely fashion, it can really be difficult for both the patient and their family. We do know that patients are sometimes reluctant to initiate these conversations, so it's really important for oncologists to, to bring this up, to have conversations with their patients about their preferences for care when they become more ill. But if you just look at the circled or the squared blue information here, you can see that only about half the time do oncologists ever initiate these conversations. One of the reasons why doctors and nurses are hesitant or reluctant to bring up conversations with patients is that they're afraid that they might cause them harm. That if they talk about their prognosis or their wishes when they become more ill, that patients may feel depressed or anxious or worried. And the good news is that a researcher at Dana-Farber named Holly Ferguson has done a ton of research in this area. And she found that patients who participate in conversations about their wishes when they become more ill are actually no more likely to feel depressed, worried, or anxious, and actually do make better decisions about their care because they're more knowledgeable and informed. 